Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, it's great to see everybody again. Uh, here we are with Michelle Fabrico, the Love Connection, and my wonderful partner, John Coleman. Hello, everybody. Hi, Hi. Art. Hi, Michelle. Uh, Michelle, it seems to me that women and men have different ways of uh, confiding in each other, sharing their secrets, if you will. I don't know what the right phrase would be. But um, not only do they have different ways of doing it, but I think women tend to talk to other women about their love and relationship challenges more than men do with other men. You mean whereas uh, guys just don't tell anybody who's available in the locker room? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that or men tend to not talk about it at all. Mm. That's my experience. Um, but women seem to be very good. Now, this is just a observation. Seem to be very good at, at finding a girlfriend to share their uh, all their messy relationship issues with. Um, is is that a good idea or not? Because I know as a man, when I hear a girlfriend say, "Oh yeah, she told me about that. How is it that the?" the I, I go, holy cow, what what are they doing talking about me behind my back? Mm. So, you know, I don't necessarily, as a man, I don't necessarily think it's good for women to share the, the confidences in our relationship. But it seems to be more common in women to, to find another woman to um, do that. Is that true? I... Well, I definitely share your uh, caution around that and that it can be very problematic to to share something going on in your relationship with a friend of yours who probably knows your partner and, you know, knows your kids, whatever, if you have kids. And so I just think, it, yeah, I would say, first of all, you know, who is this person that you're choosing? And if they're not, you know, professional, or maybe the maybe they, as a in their real life, they are a professional, but they're your friend. That can be a different situation because I think there's a different level of trust you can have. But I do think that in a way, when we share things about our personal relationship with someone else, we um, we risk, you know, first of all, betraying the confidence of our partner. Like let's say our partners not interested in sex anymore, or it's having erectile difficulties. Like, do you want to share that with your girlfriend? And do you want them to know that this is what your partner is struggling with or what you as a couple is struggling with? Not that there's anything shameful about that, but, you know, it's uncomfortable, right? And he probably wouldn't like it, I'm guessing. So it's always good to be cautious about this and to also, you know, sometimes you might share something that's going on in your relationship with a girlfriend who might actually find herself being attracted to your husband or your partner, right? They might actually hear things that like, wow, that's so interesting that she can't handle that about him, but I think that's amazing. And like, it kind of, it can excite some energy uh, between them. And so you just need to be really, really careful. And I would say that um, generally it's not a good idea, even though I don't like to suggest that people just stew in their own juices about <laughs> what's going on. Cause that's not always so healthy either. So it, it sh you, everybody needs somebody to um, unload. I don't know if this is the right term. Unload on to share their confidences to uh, a trusted, not necessarily an advisor, but somebody they trust they can share things with. And it's not always your spouse or your partner. Um, right. And so you really have to choose that person outside of the relationship that you're going to uh, use as a confidant, you have to choose that person very, very carefully. And it, yeah. it, at what point do you, what point do you think it ought to be a professional as opposed to a trusted friend? <laughs> well, I would say if in doubt, find a professional because it's always better to be safe than sorry, let's say. Um, I think the other thing too is that according, there's a, a marriage and relationship expert, Dr. John Gottman, that, that a person or a couple un, unhappy in their, in their relationship can take an average of six years of being unhappy before they actually get help. Wow. And so I know, can you imagine? I mean, I remember reading an article about this where it's basically like, that's like breaking your leg 
but not going to the emergency room right away and like, you know, waiting months and, you know, who knows what your legs shape is going to be in, in many, many months. It's like, we, we hesitate, unfortunately, to get outside support. We don't think twice about getting, you know, tax help or legal advice, but it's just unfortunate that we tend to think that we, we ought to be able to handle it ourselves or it's something that it's not that big a deal, but, um, getting someone, a coach, someone like me, a coach or counselor to support you in sorting through the conflicts, like, especially if there's something big, like there's a financial crisis in your, in your relationship, in your, in your, in your family, or, um, you know, if someone had an affair, I mean, this is not something you want to be trotting out to your cousin who may or may not, you know, keep it to themselves. You just, anyway, I think it's, it's really important to um, err on the side of caution and find someone who's going to be confidential and you could trust and you don't have to see them over and over again in your life later down the road. You know, you don't have to like, <laughs> Oh gosh, I wish I had never told this person, you know, the coach, the counselor, you see them, you pay them, you're gone, you're done. You know, it, it, it just, it's cleaner that way. I think though uh, that, um, uh, I know that, uh, 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 now my wife and I've been married about uh, 50 plus years and, um, known each other for at least a few years more than that. But she has one particular friend who she's been friendly with, I think since they've been about five or six or seven. And uh, they used to talk every day for, oh, the first 40 years of their relationship. And uh, since we've all moved away, maybe uh, uh, if it's not every day, it's down to maybe at least once a week. And uh, they are the closest of friends and they don't reveal anything to the outside world. So it's a trusted confidence mm -hmm. that they can, they can uh, just, if they're frustrated with uh, their husband or their situation or a child or something like that, they freely share that and never goes uh, outside of that one-on-one -on -one relationship. But other people, they have found a newer friend and they start talking about very personal things and it could come back and bite you. Uh, we've seen yeah. that uh, uh, with uh, no longer friends uh, who uh, uh, just don't uh, keep those confidences. So, uh, but I, I think, uh, Michelle, what you're saying is, is correct. If, if you've got a, a situation you need to talk about and it's very, very uh, uh, touchy, you might want to consider seeing a professional before you uh, reveal it to a friend. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I said, the person, you know, confidentiality, but they, they're going to be unbiased. They're going to be helping you look at the situation in a broader way and help you come to your own conclusion about it. So you're not relying on somebody else who might have some agenda who's in your family, right? Or in your, in your circle of friends, maybe they even kind of are jealous of you and they want you to come down a notch. You know, you just, unfortunately, you just never know. So basically a professional can really help you sort it out and, um, you know, come to a better decision for yourself and also help you build the tools for the next challenge, right? It's like you, you get to learn how to do it so that you can do it better on your own in the future around different different challenging issues that come up. Good stuff, Michelle. Good stuff. We look forward to seeing you again soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.